Alright, we're going to do volume today. We're continuing on. But we're going to do something called disk method. This is our second volume. This is volume number two. Volume number one was cross sections. It's what we just talked about. Remember the equation for that volume is going to be equal to the integral from A to B of the area of whatever shape I am stacking. And that's the beginning foundation to the end of the foundation that I'm looking at. That's the example we just looked at. We practiced that on Friday. What we are going to talk about is, uh, I don't remember who in this class, someone in this class, when we did the, the apples and pears and, and all that stuff, some of you cut it in half and then just sliced it as you're going through there into discs as you're going through there. Did anyone do that? Um, someone did that. It's like you took it. Uh, anyone, everyone seen the movie Ratatouille? Yeah. Yes. You, can you imagine uh, when when Remy is slicing all the things? Like he takes a zucchini and he slices it into a bunch of discs. That's what we're going to do today. Instead of stacking things on top of other things, we're going to take a shape, we're going to rotate it, and we're going to slice it into a bunch of thin discs as we're going through there. So our volume number two... is going to be called disk method. And the equation for that, and I'll show you how we get this in just a minute, is going to be pi times the integral from a to b of r of x squared dx. All right, so let's look. I'm going to draw a random amorphous graph, and we're going to see what we can uh, decipher about it. All right, I have, let's say, some shape that's starting up here. Go along, eventually decreases. And we're going to end it right there. With all of these uh, disk method and the thing that's going to come tomorrow, all of these will be rotational volumes. We're going to take a two-dimensional shape and we're going to rotate it around an axis or a line as we're going through there. Um, the best visualization I have of this, has anyone seen around Christmas time those like paper mache bells or stars that hang? Has anyone seen one of those? I don't even know. Okay, then never mind. So we're going to rotate this around the x axis. We're going to rotate it around my x axis. Say it again. Uh, we will do different rotations. I'm just going to use this as an example to prove it. If I were to take this shape and rotate it around the x-axis, I get some other side. It's just a reflection. Like this. That's what I would get if I rotate it around the x-axis. Now, again, this is just a two-dimensional shape. I can't really show a three-dimensional shape very well with just drawing it. But you imagine if I took this shape and I took this line and I rotated it around a line, what kind of shape that would get. It would be some sort of volcano weirdness that had a flat top as it's going through, or like a vase. And what we are going to do is we're going to slice it up into a bunch of very thin disks. Just like the idea of ratatouille 
chopping a bunch of stuff up. And so let me take one of those very paper, paper thin discs out and let me look at it off to the side over here. We're saying that this disc off to its side looks something like this. This is the axis. I'm just taking one of those discs, a very thin paper-like disc out. With cross-sectional volume, we just found the area of all of those shapes. And what did I do with all of those shapes? I just added them all together. We're going to do the exact same thing here, just I'm going to slice it into very small disks. So I need to find the area of this disk. How do I find the area of a circle? Pi R squared. <laughs> Pretend that it's a disk. Should we have drawn it like a circle? Yeah, it'll make a circle. Oh. <laughs> okay. oh my God, does it? So, pi r squared. The radius in this case, and it will always be this way. Is always going to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. My radius will always be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Now, in most of these cases, the radius isn't going to stay consistent. It's not going to be the same. It's going to change. And obviously, in this one, it is different. The radius there, from here to there, is different than it is over here. So the reason why it's radius in terms of x is because it's going to be a function. I'm going to have some function that changes as I'm going through there. So my integral is going to be the starting point and the ending point of the foundation still of the areas pi radius in terms of x squared dx. It's just taking all of the areas of all these really, really skinny disks and adding them all together. That's what the integral does. Um, pi is just a constant. Where can it go? Up front. So really this is pi times the integral a to b of the radius squared. Mm -hmm. Really, if you can't visualize these, it's not the worst thing in the world. You have an equation, draw the picture, find the radius, plug it in. It is simply just a plug and chug equation, yeah. if you want to think about it like that. <laughs> yeah. I'll always tell you perpendicular to the x-axis. Uh, sorry. No, 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 no. Um, Ann asked a good question. She said, uh, am I going to tell you perpendicular to what axis? No. What I will tell you is you are rotating around an axis. Via that, you should be able to tell, OK, if I'm rotating around this axis, my radius will always be perpendicular to that. Is it not so I, what? Is it not just going to be a circle? What do you mean? Like, wouldn't the radius be the same? No. So we're using No, the, I'm saying it'll always be a circle. I'm saying the radius won't be the same from here. This radius is not the same as that radius. This one is smaller. <laughs> OK. Oh, you can try asking question again. Just that's the question you asked. So whatever axis you're using, Not necessarily. Like we rotate it around the. Oh, yes. yes, actually, yeah, yeah. it will be. Mm -hmm. It'd be one. All right, let's do an example of this. Which one do I want to start with? Here are my equations y is equal to 9x squared. x is equal to 0. And y is equal to 0.
first thing I want to do is I want to rotate this area. Let's rotate this around the x-axis. Uh, the idea that a picture is worth a thousand words are very true in this. So there's almost, and I say this not trying to deal in absolutes, there's almost 0% chance you could do this without drawing a picture of it. So I'm going to draw a pretty big graph over here for this one. I did. I had it handy. Um, this shape right here, this graph, what type of graph is that? Parabola. Parabola. It is shifted up where? Nine, Nine and facing in which direction? Down. Down. Those are things that you have to know for the test. It's all background information. Um, here's my parabola. There to there. Um, I am bounded by the line x equals zero. So over on this side. And I'm bounded by the line y equals zero, so bounded on that side. So that little corner in the first quadrant is my two-dimensional shape. I'm going to take that two-dimensional shape, and I'm going to rotate it around an axis. In this case, I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis. Now, I can only really show in two dimensions what the cross view looks like. So it's going to look something like this. And in your head, I'm basically taking something that is a, it's a dome. right. It's going to make some sort of dome shape as I'm going through there. And I have a visualization if it's loading. Let me reload it. GeoGebra takes forever. Uh, first off, in this one, where is my radius going to be oriented? Where is my radius going to be oriented in this case? I'm rotating around the x-axis, so my radius is going to be perpendicular to my x-axis. So here's my radius going out and away from that. So from here to here, here, plus you, plus you, I think. Oh, that one sounded fake. So that is my axis of rotation. Here is what this will look like. Do GeoGebra straight struggling. So we have the equation I'm looking at is 9 minus x squared. We are rotating around the x-axis. We're starting at 0. And we'll talk about this in just a minute. We're going to 3. So this right now, scroll over, you can do it. This right now is just the bottom half of what we're looking at. This is from 0 to 3. And let me zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. So this is what I'm looking at. In plain view, this is what I'm looking at. As I rotate, it's going to make this sort of shape. It's going to make some sort of dome structure. It looks like that. It's a very flat dome as I'm looking through there. Now, this isn't filling it in as it's going through there, but it's going to make some sort of dome when I rotate it around that axis to give you a visualization. So, we need to figure out what that volume is of that dome. The equation for this is just pi integral a to b of the radius squared dx. Let's start with our bounds first. I am perpendicular to the x-axis. So what variable am I dealing in terms of? X. Right. What is the starting x value of my 
foundation. Zero. zero. So this is going to be pi, the integral from zero. What is the ending x value? Three. That's where I cross the x-axis, right out here. This is three. If you're confused why I'm getting that, I can factor this into three minus x and three plus x. So x is equal to negative three and positive three. So I'm starting at zero, going to three. The hard part in this is finding the radius. The radius changes, and it's this distance here. In one variable, I don't want it a function, I don't want an equation, what variable could represent that distance? R. Yeah, R. <laughs> but on the coordinate plane, is there one variable that could represent that distance? It is the y value of the function. Right here, this distance from here to here is, is the y value of the function. This distance from here to here is whatever the y value of the function is. So the radius, if I wanted an equation for radius, do I have an equation for y? Yeah, so my radius in this case is 9 minus x squared. So then we have to square it. Uh-huh. This gives me the volume of my shape. We can type that in the calculator and go from there. Open the floor to questions. What do you got for me? If you're confused or lost, speak now. Yes, sir. We could. Yeah. No. So, it's a good question. Let me reaffirm uh, why this is the radius. That right there is the radius. It is the distance from here to here, here to here. In one variable, if I were to draw, let's say, from here to this distance, I'm trying to find the distance from there to there, right? Well, if I trace this over, this distance to this distance, that's just the y value. That's just the y value of the function. I have an equation that says y is equal to 9 minus x squared. So this distance right here is 9 minus x squared. No matter where I draw it, it's going to be the y value, which is 9 minus x squared. Cool? Uh-huh. Are you finding the volume of the whole thing? Of the whole thing. So yep. Correct. I'm finding this tells me the volume of the entire thing, because these disks actually go all the way down. All the way down. Yeah, that's what we're finding. Mm -hmm. No, this is it. Like the, this is the volume of the entire thing. Right, because it's radius. The radius is going. I just need to look at half of it. So I just need to find the center out, center out. What the entire thing would be would be diameter. Yeah, but isn't the question asking just for like that area, like the area bounded by x equals zero and y equals zero? Rotated around the x-axis. So that's where it starts. I take that shape and I want to rotate it all the way around the x-axis. Now I'm no longer just sitting in the first quadrant. I'm sitting in the first, fourth, fifth, and seventh. Because we're thinking in three dimensions now, right? Now we no longer have four, we have eight. Yeah. All right, let's do another one, but we're gonna rotate a little bit differently this time. I want to do the same thing, same shape, but now we're going to rotate it around the y axis. Yes? No, it makes the same thing. Because they'll, they'll always be symmetrical, because you're rotating all 360 degrees. All right, we're going to rotate this one around the y axis now, so same shape.
starts in the same way, starts up top, pointing down, bounded by here, bounded here. So that's the two-dimensional shape. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate it around this axis. So I'm going to drop here, 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 here. And that's my other half, not drawn very symmetrically. My radius, I'm rotating around the y-axis. So where is my radius going to be pointed, horizontally or vertically? Horizontally. horizontally. It's going to go out from the axis to the shape. Out from the axis to the shape. Remember, I only want the radius. If I had taken the entire thing, it would have been diameter. All right. I need to figure out, well, first off, let's start with our bounds. This is pi, the integral from a to b of r of y squared dy, because I'm dealing in terms of y. I'm perpendicular to the y-axis. What is the starting y value? Zero. What is the ending y value? Nine. Nine. So pi zero to nine. All I have to figure out is the radius, that distance, in terms of y. Well, let's go through the same logic. One variable, what does this distance represent? That is the x value of the function. Do I have an equation that says x equals in terms of y? No, but I could rearrange my equation that I have. The equation I'm looking at is y is equal to 9 minus x squared. So to rearrange that, I'm going to subtract 9. y minus 9 is equal to x squared, or negative x squared. Move the negative over, that will turn into 9 minus y is equal to x squared. Take the square root, so I get x is equal to positive and negative, thank you. Now, I know we're rotating around the x-axis, sorry, the y-axis, but again, only look at where we were looking at for the two-dimensional shape. Bless you. The two-dimensional shape, was that the positive part or the negative part? The positive. It was the positive part, so I'm going to ignore the negative. So I'm looking at this is my radius. This is going to be square root 9 minus y, quantity squared, dy. If I type that in, it will give me some volume, and I can go from there. C? All right, I have a couple I want you to try on your own. Here's the first one. Example number two. Rotate that section, that two-dimensional section around the x-axis. No, that's as zoomed as it gets in. That's as zoomed as it gets in. Yeah. 